Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here and I'm doing a slightly different video today. Um, given that it's New Year's, a Happy New Year everyone, I thought I'd make a video uh, with my top tips for what they're worth on how to go about getting the very top grades possible in A-level maths, in particular A2 maths. So this is what this video is going to be about and I'm going to talk about the following things. I'm going to go through this, this, these three concepts in order to um, give you good coverage of what I mean on how to get a top grade in A-level maths. Firstly, when to revise and how much to, to do. Secondly, how to revise. And thirdly, some exam skills you're going to need. Now, I've highlighted the word revise and put it in inverted commas basically because I don't like the word. And it, I think it encourages us to do things um, in revision, as it were, that aren't useful to us in the exam. I much prefer prepare for exam because that makes me think I'm actually doing something. Revising makes me think of passively sitting down, reading a book and hoping it's sticking in my brain. For me and for maths, it's about doing maths and doing as much as you possibly can. Even better than prepare, my favourite word for it is to practice. You need to practice how you're going to perform in the exam. So for me, and the main things I'm going to say in this video, is it's all about doing as much uh, as you can and practicing how you want to perform in that exam if you want to get the top grades. So our aim in order to get an A or an A start is basically to be almost perfect in the exam, flawless, to make virtually no errors. To get an A star, you've got to average 90% across core three and core four. That's a very tough task, but possible. Possible with hard work, practice, and dedication and I'm going to show you some of the things that I think will help you to get there. So first off, when to practice and how much to practice. Now I've written the early bird catches the worm there, famous phrase. I don't mean by that early in the morning. For me early in the morning is perfect uh, as a time of day but other people work better at night etc. What I mean by that is start now, start today. So tip one, start today. And you should be revising regularly from now up to the main ex uh, May exam, May June exam. Do not think you can um, crash study with uh, uh, four weeks before and get an A, a, an a star. I, I just don't think it's the best way to go about it. You start now. And how much do you do? Well, you do, uh, you know, a reasonable amount often. So do some each day. So if you did, let's say, an hour a day. I'm sure if that was good, solid, purposeful practice, you get an A star, no problem. But it depends on the day, but do uh, regularly do so. So you should be doing revision on top of your homework, starting now, uh, adding up to at least seven hours a week, I would say. That would guarantee you the top grades you need for university. It would also mean you're not panicked when it comes to um, the exam. You're ready when it comes to the months of May and June and you're ready to perform at your top. So first tip is start today, start early, get your revision in process and do little and often. Do it often, as often as you can, seven hours a week and escalate that as we get closer and closer to the exam. This is on top of your homework, by the way, not uh, inclusive of your homework. Now, the second thing is how do you practice? Now, for me, practicing is not having a book open and thinking you're going to absorb information. And it's not uh, just uh, writing down, uh, uh, keeping a little book of all neat notes of all the maths you've got to learn, etc. For me, that's almost a waste of time in maths. For me, practice, like this guy is here, has to be on the edge of your ability. You've got to be practicing uh, the following. Things you're not good at, things you're not good at, And secondly, you've got to be practising in a way that mimics how, how the exam is. Okay? And it's active. It must be active and about doing maths, not about passively absorbing maths. So these are what I suggest you do. This is how I would suggest that you practise your maths. I would firstly use um, do questions, do questions to learn your 
maths. And I'll explain what I mean by that. And secondly, I would do real exams under timed conditions. Okay, so let me elaborate on what I mean by that. Doing questions is how you learn maths. You look at you look at a question, you attempt it. If you can't do it, you go back to the theory and you look in your notes to make sure you understand the theory. And if you can do it, you do it and check the answer and make sure you've done it right and make corrections if appropriate. So you do your learning of each chapter, say in core three and core four, by doing questions. Now at the same time, what you might do is when you identify something you don't understand, you might make a revision card on it. You might write down a definition that you always forget. You might write down so uh, something that you always make a mistake. You can come out of this set of steps with some revision cards or notes. But you don't start off making these notes. Um, you should have done the course with your teachers and you could look online, and I'll show you where you can look online on, on, on the website, but there's, but you shouldn't be starting off making a, a perfect set of notes. For me, that's a waste of time. Do questions, do maths, make supplementary notes when you're identifying things you get wrong and things you need to know. Secondly, never, 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 and I'll say never again, do an exam, a past paper exam, unless it's under time conditions. You want to save these so that you are doing them in the hour and a half that you've got. And you do not do them like in the common room when you've got a free period or for homework, etc. Save these to mimic exam conditions. Sit in a room in silence with nothing but the equipment that you've got for the exam, an hour and a half, and do that exam and test yourself against it. Record how you do from your first attempt at doing that all the way through. Afterwards, mark it against the mark scheme learn how the examiner gives marks, learn where you make your mistakes, and then um, put, use that information of the things you've done wrong to, um, to target the type of questions you're going to do going forward to improve those areas. So, two main tips. Do questions to learn your maths. Secondly, save all exams until you do them in real conditions. Now, let me give you an example of some questions you could do to learn your maths. Now, if you go to the website, so if you go to HegartyMaths.com, okay, and you go to A-Level, so I'm going to go A-Level, and let's take the GCSE board, and let's say we're doing Core 3. Now, go to past paper questions here, and I've got a set of questions here under Solomon. For each chapter of Core 3, there's a set of questions, and if you go in there, like, for example, algebraic fractions, I've identified nine questions, really good questions, that you can work your way through in order to learn algebraic fractions. So pick the first one. So if you go into this uh, uh, section here, then that video plays and shows the solution. But what you want to do is here, you can click this open, and it's got all the questions that are in this series, those nine questions that I identified, and you can work your way through that question. So work your way through this, then check your answer off the video here. And then go to the next question, which is this question here, which is the second question in the video, um, that question there. And what you'd want to do is you'd want to work your way through that question um, there um, and check it off the video. These would be perfect questions to practice. So let's give another example. So let's imagine if I was in here again and I was in the A-level section um, I just want to show you again, I was in the core three. It's done for core three and core four, so you can go in there. Past paper questions, Solomon questions by topic. Let's say we were picking differentiation. Now for this one, I've identified seven questions that I think are good ones. Go into the question here, and here's the set of questions on an attached worksheet here. You can work your way through these, and you can check your answers off my videos here. Now say you're going through and you don't understand this at all you're having big problems understanding it. What you do at that point is then you go back, so you go back to the A-level section here, Edexcel, Core 3, and you go to the lessons on that. So your, your fundamental understanding of the topic of differentiation is not good. You go to Core 3 Tutorials Differentiation, and there are the 11 videos that cover everything you need to know for differentiation in Core 3. So you go back there and you supplement your understanding, maybe you make a few revision cards, and then you go back to the questions with that knowledge. That's if you're totally stuck.
okay? So there are two ways I would suggest that you go about doing the doing the questions section, okay? So uh, going back to where I was, that they're the questions I would suggest to do on top of maybe mixed exercises in the book, etc. Then print out past paper in silence, do it in real exam conditions and mark your work forensically against the mark scheme. Work out how you get marks, work out why you drop marks, work out what type of questions come up each time, record every result you get and what questions you do badly on so that they identify what questions you should practice next time more of. So there's the how to practice, that's the best suggestion as I would say how to practice. Learn by doing questions only do exam papers under real exam conditions and mimic those conditions. Okay, lastly, the last tip is exam skills. It says here, skills, it's not something you can learn, it's just natural. In this case, I totally disagree with that. Um, in the case of preparing for an exam, the skills you need can be learned and they will be learned if you practice properly. And the main skills are as follows. The first thing is to know what gets marks. Know what gets marks and the way you do that is when you mark your exam papers when you mark your timed exam papers yourself so it's really important you do these yourself on top of the mocks your school may set you you read mark schemes carefully and almost forensically, the word is. So you look to see how you get marks and what, what things you don't get marks for. So your exam skills will improve because when you um, look at an exam paper, you'll know, you'll recognise the type of things the examiner is looking for, and you will fulfil the criteria to get full marks. The second thing, almost the most important thing, is what I call R T F Q. Read the flipping question. OK, how many times students just make a mistake by misreading the question? For example, something small like give your answer to one significant figure, leave your answer in exact form, etc. Look at the question, read it carefully so you answer it in the right way. Don't drop small little marks when you know what to do just by not reading the question carefully. And it's really important when you're practicing exam papers in an hour and a half, you give yourself the hour and a half. Even if you finish in an hour, make yourself sit there for half an hour to make sure you go through and check every question twice, check you've read the question carefully, etc. So that would be my second tip. The third tip is as follows. Use your calculator effectively. I can't tell you how useful the calculator will be for you. Now, I've actually, if you go back to the website and you go to uh, Hegarty Maths and you go to the teachers section this time and in resources, how to use your calculator effectively, I've got here. And I've got a set of videos here that give you six ways your calculator can help you in the exam. And I'm going to add more videos to those. The calculator, in particular this Casio one that is allowed in the exam, you can use it to differentiate and to integrate numerically. And you can use it to do all sorts of checks, to check answers in the exam. I can't tell you how useful this is, and it's really important to get your calculator skills up to scratch in order to get the top marks available. Okay, so they're the main uh, exam skills um, that you that you must demonstrate. And the and the fourth one is whatever you do, um, don't um, uh, you know stop, don't stop or finish early and then think your job's done. The one mark could be the difference between an A and a B and, or an A star and uh, an A. So you've got to work to the bitter end, finding all sorts of marks, reading the question carefully, checking with your calculator, rereading it, and, and sense checking it for sensible answers, okay? So they're my main tips for the exam. The last thing I would say, just to finish with, is you can definitely do it. 100% I believe if you start practicing now, and practicing properly, you would be able to get the ARA star you're looking for. 
the, all the greats uh, know this. Beckham says, my secret is practice. I've always believed if you want to achieve anything special in life, you have to work, 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 and then work some more. Michelangelo, the greatest painter of all time, who many people said is such a natural. People said he, uh, he was born with a paintbrush in his hand. He actually said, if people knew how hard I worked to gain my mastery, people would not think my work so wonderful at all. These people, successful people, work hard. And if you start working hard as of today and properly by doing maths and practicing properly, you will achieve what you want to achieve. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you found that useful. But get on there and do some revision and get that grade you're looking for um, at the end of maths A level. Thanks, guys.